Hello. In this video, I'm going to use the uh, principles of radical stability uh, and the things that stabilized organic radicals to help identify the weakest carbon hydrogen bond uh, on a molecule. And this is equivalent to asking uh, the question of where on this compound would the most stable carbon radical be? Uh, one of the things you might feel like you're going to have some trouble doing is looking at a molecule, even though this doesn't have a lot of carbon atoms or a lot of hydrogen atoms, uh, it has a lot of choices and you might not feel comfortable immediately just staring at that and say, oh, it's, it's that spot right there. Um, so one way you can approach this problem is to sort of systematically consider every hydrogen atom. I realize it's not something we typically do, but I'm, I'm going to draw them all in here and it's going to look crowded. Bear with me. And I, you know, I'm just going to make this one look like a CH3. Let's get these off of each other. So it looks a little crowded, but here are all of the hydrogen atoms. Uh, some have two, one, one carbon has three hydrogen atoms, some have one uh, uh, hydrogen atom. And so really what we want to consider is each, um, you know, kind of carbon hydrogen bond. And we can go through this a couple of different ways. Uh, for example, we can use, if we have it, bond dissociation energy is to, to recognize that uh, and, and to, to estimate the different carbon hydrogen bond energies and to pick the one that's smallest. Um, and I'll do that or I'll, I'll do a little bit of that for in a minute. Um, or, and this is what I encourage to give you some practice, let's just draw all of the possible radicals and evaluate them. So basically we can remove any of the carbons that have hydrogens and they all have at least one hydrogen. We can remove a hydrogen and create a radical at that position. And so that is what I am going to do. And to just give me a moment to generate all of these structures. There are a bunch of them since there are a lot of positions. And one more. So there are eight of these. And I want to I move these bottom two a little bit because I don't want them to be covered up by my head. And so we have eight different positions this radical can be. Um, but we can probably start eliminating some of them pretty quickly. Uh, So I'm going to write a word or two words uh, next to the structure of each uh, radical to, to sort of describe what kind of, of radical that is. And so for the most part, I'm talking about writing words like primary, secondary, and tertiary. Though for the first two uh, on the top, I wrote the word vinyl. It's important that they are distinguished as being on sp2 hybridized carbons. And I'm writing some primaries and secondaries and tertiaries. And so if you remember that primary, you know, or if you remember that primary is less stable than secondary and secondary is less stable than tertiary, we can already start to uh, remove some of these radicals from consideration. And if you remember that vinyl radicals are even less stable than primary radicals, we can get rid of two more. Um, oops, and I made a mistake. This last one down here is secondary, not tertiary. Okay. Uh, and in fact, we have two different tertiary radicals to consider, and they are a little bit different. 
And one of them, this one up at the top, is also an allyl radical. Remember the allyl label means that the radical is next to an alkene. Uh, and so it's part of this allyl system. That means that it has resonance stabilization and it is going to be the most most stable radical. And if you want, we can also go to use and look at bond association energies. Now these are bond association energies are not perfectly matched up to the specific compound to give you an idea. Right. Let's, let's scroll down a little bit here and so so we have primary, secondary, tertiary, allyl, and vinyl because those are the sorts of situations we have here. And then the bond association energies of these in kilojoules per mole primary is four. Uh, for 10. Secondary is 387. Tertiary is 381. Allyl is 364. And vinyl is 464. Again, using these bond association energies, we can very quickly see that if we can identify an allyl position, that carbon-hydrogen bond is going to be much weaker, and it's going to be the more stable. Hold on. What is this? Zooming. There we go. I apologize for all of the, the zooming in and out. Uh, if we can identify an allyl position, then that position is going to have the weakest carbon-hydrogen bond. And so I am going to go back on my original structure and delete all of the other uh, hydrogens except for our weakest carbon-hydrogen bond at that allyl position. In the last video uh, on the stability of radicals, I want to give a couple of examples of radicals that are so stabilized by one thing or another that they are considered stable or persistent radicals, uh, which means they can be isolated and, and stored for long periods of time. Thank you for watching.